Hi and welcome back to a new video today. Also finally a video about the 700 XTX. A lot of you were asking why I did not have a video for review for launch. It's pretty simple. I didn't have a card, didn't get a card from AMD, which I'm not going to complain about. It's their decision whom they're sending cards to. Like all the big German YouTubers, like Hardware Deals and the others also didn't get cards from AMD. So it's not like we didn't want to do some videos, but it's more like AMD didn't want us to do videos. So they didn't provide samples to us, which I mean, I have enough video content. I don't really care, but that's just the explanation why I did not have content about these cards yet. And then when I did the same kind of statement on Instagram that I don't have a card, somebody informed me that he actually bought two of them because he first purchased one and he wasn't sure if he was getting that specific card from the shop. Then he ordered a second one in a different shop and he received both of them. And then he told me that I can just buy the second card off him, which I did. And before he sent my card to me, he was testing his card and he had a huge temperature delta between the GPU temperature and the GPU hotspot temperature, about 40 to 50 Kelvin difference and his card was throttling GPU clockwise under load. So he asked if he could double check with my card and the card I was intended to get was fine. So he kept my card and he sent his card that was having some like temperature issues. And that was like over a week ago and honestly I did not really care about this too much. But then three or four days ago I saw news on Hardware Lux that they had this issue or they saw this issue on multiple review pages or multiple people who got the AMD reference card that some of these just have a huge temperature delta between the GPU temperature and the GPU hotspot temperature. Unfortunately, the guy I bought this card off opened this up, which is probably something I would also do because if you have a huge temperature delta, the first thing you would think of is probably like bad thermal paste application or some issue with the cooler like mounting pressure contact. Luckily he sent a picture to me which I'm just going to show you right here and this looked fine to me though. Like I did not see any kind of weird thermal paste spreading or like mounting pressure distribution. It looked pretty decent in the center so yeah I'm not quite sure what the issue was here. Then he assembled the card again with a new thermal paste applied. That's exactly the state where we have the card on the table right now. So the topic for today's video will be, does this card have some kind of weird temperature delta between GPU and GPU hotspot? And is there anything we can do about it? Like maybe different mounting pressure, maybe just a different thermal paste application. We will try to investigate this a little bit. Removed all of the screws. So we're just going to open this up. When he disassembled the card, he also cleaned it and applied a new paste, which is Cryonaut. And yeah, I mean, to be honest, this looks pretty decent, at least mounting pressure wise and like contact wise. Also the amount of paste is, that's pretty spot on. Like it's a very good application. Could be a tiny bit more thermal paste, but apart from that, looks very good to me, very good contact. And in this state, he told me that he had exactly the same issues again, like 40 to 50 degrees Celsius delta between GPU and GPU hotspot. And his theory was that maybe the like vapor chamber could be broken, which is in theory possible. I think it's unlikely, but it's possible. And in this state, like the thermal trans the thermal transport from this area right here to the rest of the heatsink would be bad. So that could be one thing, but I think for now, just going to remove his thermal paste and reapply a new one. Cleaned GPU area and also the cooler area. And now I drowned the GPU in paste a bit more. Usually it doesn't hurt. The mounting pressure is usually high enough to just squeeze it out to the side. And for the first quick test, I just have the GPU backplate mounted like this spring right here to only have mounting pressure in the GPU center. Because like theoretically speaking, if your cooler was bent or like if your backplate was bent, it could influence the temperatures. And for now, I just want to see if the thermal paste or like if the GPU contact area, if all of this is fine or if we can see any kind of problems. Honestly, I'm a bit confused. So there doesn't seem to be an issue to me. I just did a quick Fermark test. It's been running for, I don't know, like three, four minutes, but 
it seems like the temperature is getting pretty stable. GPU temperature like 65, hotspot maybe like 81, 82, but that's the delta, it's not even 20 Kelvin, so that looks quite normal to me. Not quite sure. The GPU clock is a bit low. I'm not sure if that's related to Fermark or, yeah, maybe I will just plug the ASRock card for a quick comparison and then also do some 3D Mark testing. Now installed the ASRock card, different PCB, different cooler, so it should be a quite nice comparison. We'll run it for about five minutes in Fermark and we will check. There are some differences with the ASRock card, but it's not that different. You can see the GPU clock is slightly higher. The delta between GPU temperature and hotspot is slightly higher. It's like 19 to 20 Kelvin. Also this I would consider normal. Board power draw is slightly higher than the other card. Also voltage is slightly higher by maybe like 40 to 50 millivolt. But apart from that, this also looks totally okay. We can already draw some conclusions of this because honestly, if the cooler did have any kind of real problems like the vapor chamber to be defective, then the card would not be able to dissipate constantly 360 watt, which this card is definitely able to. So the cooler seems to be fine. Surface area seems to be fine as well, like the flatness maybe, because otherwise we would not see these kind of temperatures. That basically only leaves us with bad thermal paste or like this phase change material application and maybe also mounting pressure of the original installation. Because that's the problematic thing about this. We did not have the original condition because he already swapped the paste once. So we did not see the original state, which is a bit of a pity, but we know that the card had these issues originally. So yeah, I will do some 3 d mark testing with these to also get some performance numbers for comparison to just like exclude any kind of like down clocking behaviors or anything like that. And then mount the screws to the card, to the PCB, see if this like warps the PCB in any weird shape and this could maybe influence something. And then the last step would be testing with the backplate. But so far, I mean, this looks okay to me. In terms of extreme, I'm not quite sure if my graphics score is a little bit low. It seems like that, but apart from that, just looking at a GT1 and GT2 tests, the clock is between 2500 and 2600 megahertz. That seems to be normal. GPU temperature at the end, 61, 62, hotspot, 86, 87. So that's like 25 Kelvin Delta, which I think should be normal. Board power draw 390 and voltage 0.94. With the AMD card, uh, we seem to be in the region what I expected, not sure what just happened to the other run. Anyway, checking this card, it's clocking a bit lower, like one or 200 megahertz lower, which is expected because it's also rated at a lower clock. But apart from that, I mean, look at the Delta, it's like 67 to like 81, that, that's perfect. That's not even 15 Kelvin. That is a very nice delta between GPU and hotspot. Board power draw is slightly lower, also as expected. Voltage slightly lower, also as expected, but it looks normal to me. In the next step, I'm going to add back all the other screws to tighten down the PCB itself and see if this results in any changes. Test passed again, 14,400. Clock looks fine. We are at 65 degrees Celsius at the end and hotspot 81. So that's like 15, 16 Kelvin difference. I reran the same test again, this time with the backplate mounted and as expected, it's the same thing. It's like 15 or 16 Kelvin difference between the GPU and GPU hotspot temperature. This kind of also eliminates all kind of theories with like a broken cooler, broken vapor chamber, uh, like uneven surface. Everything is kind of like not relevant anymore because it just looks fine. If you maybe have one of the affected cards, then maybe let us know because testing from the start would be essential, like testing a card that has not been opened yet because that's not the condition we had right here. But it's also good news because we know from the original owner that he definitely, he had issues. His card was down clocking, he hit 110 degrees Celsius on the hotspot, which is not the thing anymore. And this means that if you would experience the same kind of issue, then you could probably fix it by just remounting the cooler, mount it with any kind of different uh, thermal paste with proper mounting pressure and you should be good. At least that's my assumption from now. 
Maybe it's just an issue with insufficient mounting pressure, maybe just bad mounting. I'm not quite sure in what order they are mounting the screws. So it could be also related to if you just mount the spring first or if you mount the outer screws first. But the way I usually do it, I just mount the GPU first and then the outer screws. And that seems to be resulting in great temperatures. So if you have any kind of issues, then maybe just try the same thing. Mount the spring first, mount the outer screws, then mount the backplate and see if this helps to improve your problem. But seems to be a fixable thing, so probably this time not so much drama around these cards. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.